Hey everyone, what's up? <laughs> so we're we're back. Uh, we're back with yet another episode. This is episode three of the Sears Tractor. Tractor! I think it's a 66, right? Because I was playing around with... I'll show a little clip. Playing around with the cover, the rusted cover. Which is usually where the information is. Although it's not... It's not. It's different, right? The actual cover... The stamp data on it is different than what I'm used to seeing. And when I research it... And I have a whole bunch of Tecumseh to engines. It, it is different. But this is the 60s. And it's a Sears. So you got a Tecumseh engine on a Sears tractor. So, you know... I, it's kind of hard to date some of that, but we'll get further. But it, I think because I see the number sixty-six within the code, and we know it's in that range. So in the last episode, and you know the first one, we kind of pulled it out of its hole, had some fun cleaning it up, and that was really that whole episode was about me and you guys getting to know this thing because you know I basically just got it, never had a chance to you know look it over. It sat outside in the winter, and we got it out of its hole and cleaned it up and. Brought up and brought in here, brought it up on the table, and and got a, a a good close look at it. That was my first shot. You know, without doing something like that, I always like to do that. I like to clean. It didn't need to be cleaned all that much, but I always like to clean it. It gives me an opportunity to see is is, is there leaks or is there a lot of mung? You know, whatever. You kind of get intimate. You get that's your first knowledge. And and I often always say I like to bring everything in, and get everything cleaned up in here first. And it was its first cleaning. And actually, since then, I haven't cleaned it again. Uh, it's in the garage, so... Second episode, we kind of started going over the motor and really getting in deep. And as you can see in that second episode, there's a lot of problems. We got a, a, the deck, took the head off because the head was no good. Mikey found another one. The spark plug hole was just blowed out. The deck was completely warped. The valve was bad. We've got all kinds of stuff going on in the motor. You got scoring. Um, we don't. We don't even know if the tranny works right at that point. Like we just there's, there's nothing really to work. I can tell that this thing there's not a lot to work with here. The motor is really kind of shot. It's beat, but we're going to try to revive it, right? Just because, right? And then if it runs and we get it running, we can go and test the tranny and the other stuff. And you know, you're freeing up everything. So to get everything freed up, of course you got to clean it. And then you got to lubricate the hell out of it. And you got to pull on it, shove it, bang it, tweak it. So we did a lot of that, dealing with the valves and everything in the second episode. And the third episode, this one, is going to be just going over the ignition system. Okay, it's points, so we want to get in there, uh, inspect everything, get it all cleaned up, solve any issues, and there's some problems in there. So this will be a shorter episode. I'm going to break this is the compressor. Arch, why don't you turn the damn thing off before you start recording? Because, fellas, I'm in the shop, all right? You know, it's shop day. It's almost lunchtime. It is lunchtime. All right, I gotta go. It's lunch. <laughs> so we're gonna do that, and there's some problems in there. And even if I put another motor on or whatever, you know, th these old ignition systems are getting old. They are old. They're as old as me. This thing's as old as me. This thing's like over 50 years old. So we'll get in there and we'll deal with that. And I, I have a handful of these motors. Um, so I try to keep some of this stuff and I will, I will even if there's a couple other episodes somewhere on my channel dealing with some like the snowblower style to come engines or whatever and the older ones and uh, working with points. Um, and this way I have an opportunity to kind of play with the motor in that regard, get it firing right, see what I have for that inventory because it's all very similar. And um, since I have this stuff laying around, I like to kind of check it out and go over it because it could be useful. So let's say I put another motor on this thing and I need some extra parts and I want to do it in points, right? Because it is old. Um, yeah, you could put a newer motor on with electronic ignition and everything and that might be a thing later on. We might do that. I'm not saying I'm against it, but it would be nice to see if we can get this motor going with the ignition system, with all the factory stuff, whatever it is that I have laying around. And then I can put these things on the shelf later if I decide to take you know take the motor off whatever I can put it on the shelf and I know what I have I know how bad it is I know what it needs I know what I did to it especially one of the by the way one of the benefits fellas of doing these videos uh, for yourself and others even if you're not on YouTube grab your camera when you're working on stuff like this and start shooting some footage it'll give you um, that video and, a, and take pictures too and a pictorial library of what did it look like because 
you, you might come back, get busy with life, and come back, I don't know, weeks later, days later, months later, and you're like, I don't remember. And that's one of the beauties of this, where I can kind of look back and what the footage that I'm taking. And me and other YouTubers do this. We're like, all right, we got to recheck the. I was just watching Musty, and he had to go back through the footage just to see if, if something had happened because he's got his head and everything and he didn't see it. And he was like, that's one of the beauties of doing this. Right, because I can go back and I can watch it, and I can even slow it down and see if did this thing happen or the event, what was going on. I think he was trying to mate two cola regions together, and it was loosening up, and he wasn't sure, so he went back over the footage, slowed it down. You can see the harmonics. So, and and if you ever want to be a YouTuber, right? Because I often talk about that on my live shows. Check out my Saturday live. Um, usually around eight or nine Eastern Standard Time. Um, you know, you can practice and you can look back at it and you can go, you know what, my footage isn't much different than Arches and somebody else's. Maybe I'll do a YouTube channel. I often talk about that in my life. So let's get started on this uh, part of the project. Like I said, the next couple will be shorter. We're going to do the points, ignition system, check it out, see what's going on with the ignition switch. It's, it's just every time you touch something, something else breaks, which is why I'm not getting too involved in any one thing. Right? I know my friend Henry was like, why, Arch, why are you taking it apart and apart and cleaning it out? I'm disappointed in you. We don't even know. This motor is, is junk. Honestly, it needs a full rebuild, really, what it needs. And it may happen. Um, we got to check tranny, check everything else, go over. I'm going to do a little lubrication and a few other things. And next video, I think we'll go We'll go over the carburetor. That one's kind of funny. Uh, you're going to see. But that'll be a quickie, too. And then I think for the last video, we're going to we'll see if we can get this thing running. All right, so, and then we can figure out what else is going on with it. Um, see you in a couple of minutes. Stay tuned for this. Watch the garage. Let's pull this off again. Okay. This is actually, I noticed, this is broken. Right, there's a washer somewhere. Where'd it go? So there's supposed to be other feet. And then broke off. I think what we're going to do is we're going to pin it at some point. We'll drill a hole, put a pin in, and it's where it stops, right? And drill all the way through. And then you pin it, and then it sits flush underneath the washer. And I think that'll help it, right? That that will have to do another day because that's that's a little bit more engineering. I got mice in here now. You guys know how to get rid of mice? He comes across my desk at night and says hi to me. Stupid idiot. There's probably two of them in here now. They usually come in pairs. And then there's threes and fours and hundreds. And he don't want to leave now because the eating's good here. I don't know. There's nothing to eat in here. I don't know. I'm trying not to leave anything out. Let's just put this back. Right, most of the way. And then let me get a Privus. Starting to lose things, fellas. Where's my hammer? Cut! Can't find it. Now, all we really need to do is just apply a little bit of pressure. It'll probably come right off, right? And then my lead hammer, which is what I was looking for, which was right in front of me, but I had to clean up. Oh, all right, we may have to, it wants to go. It probably hasn't been off in a long time, fellas, so. We need a good place to pry. I don't mean to pry. All right, put some pressure on it. I've been lubricating it for a few days now. All right, we're gonna have to put... Since that won't work, let's turn it. And what we'll do next is, there's a nice little hole here for a puller. But we can also put our banger tool there as well and give it a blap. And that'll shake it up a little bit. Let's set that up next. You know, these things fight you. And then if not, we'll put a big, I'll try my big puller. And that'll take it off. All right, I'm going to be in your way. Let's see. I'm just going to apply some pressure. There's a nice point here. And give it a blap. Something's happening. Yeah, she's moving, I think. Yeah, she might be. Let's put some more liquids on it. 
Liquids. Let's put some more gender fluids on it. I think it might be moving. And we can find out. Hold on. We'll find out. Just to make sure it looks like it is. Because we don't want to be causing damage. So because everything here is questionable. Right, that's where it was. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on them. Just there's a nice post here too. It's like a flat, so we can kind of catch that. Usually they just pop off. It should be on a taper. Yep, that's it. And I'll get you in close. I'll set up the camera. There should be a key here. We're gonna clean up that nut. And wash her a little bit. And she, oh god, she's a mess in there. See? My C's been in there. We'll clean that up. Alright. Let me get. I guess I'll get out the big vacuum. And we'll scrape and I'll blow and I'll clean and I'll blow the house down. We'll be back. Gonna cover the camera. It's gonna get ugly. And here and here is where the prints are. And I might be able to set a small a camera up somehow in here, but you, you probably won't see what I'm doing. Alright. See the mess? That light's flickering a little bit all up in here. We'll get all that kind of washed down and cleaned up in a bit. Usually I like to bring it outside and wash it proper. Right? That's usually what I do, but we ain't going to be able to move this thing back and forth. I'll do what I can. Alright. We got all the smoke in from Canada. It's disgusting. It's dark as hell from all the smoke from the fires. I gotta check in on that. So we see some issues to begin with, right? I f that broke off, see? So we need to fix that, see what that's coming from. And we may wanna put either a new wire on here. This is pretty beat up. Could have been a mouse chewing on it. So that went over to here as well. This is the big one from the condenser. And that seems like it's okay, but we'll take this off here. Then over here, there's a big cut in the wire here. This is a big uh, secondary wire here. The high tension. It goes up in here and fits in there nice. So what I'll do is I'll clean this off, blow it out. I'll wrap it in some tape, nice. Then we'll put some heat shrink over it. And we don't want to make like a bulge or anything, but we want to get that clean. And we'll put a new end on, all right, as well. So put an endo. This wire, this is sort of their cloth high temp, and it's pretty crappy. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put new here as well, replace this. It's all beat. Might have been chewed. So we'll replace that as well, and I'll put machine tool wire, and I'll bring that back around and probably make that black because uh, it's a control wire or, or blue. All right, something nice, and we'll put a good wire on that too, something decent. I mean, you could just use 18 gauge, but I think we'll put a 16 on there just in case. We'll see. It doesn't need to be much. It just needs, like, machine tool wire is made for high temp in machines and engines. It's pretty naggy in here. I was able to get down in here um, and blow it out and scoop it out. There was a lot of junk still left in here. All this junk in here, I sprayed it down. I washed it down. I blew and vacuumed, so it's cleaner. And now we should be able to just pull this right off. All right, let's give it a tug. Sometimes I need a bigger screwdriver for this, but you don't need much. And this will come off. And usually it says we got to clean this up. All right, I'll clean all this up. Now this thing, what I usually do with these, right? Yeah, we got to get all that out in there because we don't want any gook in there. So what I do with these is I clean them off with some brake clean or whatever, and I make sure they're clean, and then I spray them with clear because this is not just a dust cap. It's it's a number, it does a lot. Um, and then we wanna clean out in here and get a little lubricant back on that seal. We're gonna pull this guy out as well. And that's our felt, okay. We're gonna clean that real good, just, just in some solvent, a um, little gas or something. And then oil it and make sure it's oily, but not drippy. We'll put it back when we're done, okay. So I'm gonna do that. And then we can, we can check the gap after we get it all clean. And usually what I like to do with these is I pass a file in, but this may need more than a file, but a simple, small, like, you know, point style file. And we just lift it up a little bit. 
put the file in right and then just carefully I got a lot of stuff in my way so I'll find a spot that I can get my hand in but we just kind of clean that and you, sh you might see some of it I'll give you a closer shot because you're on an angle but we'll just you know run it in there a bunch of times now we want to clean this off with brake cleaner but then we need to put with a, a just a tiny bit of oil on that and a little bit of oil back there on the seal right and then blot out anything that's no good but once we get then we want to make sure you try to drive it in flat and we'll do it again after we get it clean in here because we're going to get junk on it and yeah, there wasn't really anything there a lot of times I like to put a little bit of sandpaper in that too because I think it does a better job but we're just all you want to do is take off anything that the arcing creates like uh, a buildup. So I'm just using a bit of this old gas in a spray bottle, right? Just to flush everything down. You can see all the junk coming out of it. It's filthy in there. And I usually just take a brush. This is like you cut the bristles down on like an acid brush. And I just kind of go in. And anything that we can get out, because it's been here for a while. We might want to just a quick polish on this shaft. And we'll show you that. We'll do that real quick. Anything around. We'll blow it when we're done. We'll wipe it. But all the interruptions going on today, I'm slowly getting there. Took the crappy end off. All right, we'll fix that. I got tape. I peeled off anything that was just no good at this point. Cleaned everything really good. Got the tape and built it up a little bit more in that area, right? So we have more dielectric, more insulator. And we're going to take this heat shrink down a little further, right? down into there so this way it's down in pretty far and let's heat it up shrink it up and I'll get to the next step that's good the heat from the engine will take it the rest of the way I also cleaned up this, right? This area here, I just put a little polish on it and a little lubricant back and forth. All right, get that polished up. And I like to see if I can just take... This looks like it's okay. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll put... a very. If I have some small heat shrink, we'll put that on there too. That comes back down in... Where is that coming from? I'm not really sure. I think it's from the coil. So we want to get that fixed. Now, you need either a thin pair of these uh, feeler gauges, whatever, but we're going to do 20 thousandths. It's written on the cover right here somewhere. It's right here. So they write it for you, but I just felt that it's good. Make sure, light, slight tug, make sure that's nice and clean, no oil. Let's just check that for tight just to make sure, but we're good. Yeah, she's okay. Now, <clears throat> all that's tucked in nice. I got my new white control wire, right? 16 gauge, um, good stuff. Everything is all tied in back here. I think we're okay. I turned the felt pad around the other way, right? To put a little bit more tension on it. It's all clean. I pre-oiled it and shoved it in there. Not too much oil, just motor oil. Touch of oil on this pivot here and a little bit of oil back on that seal, but it's all been cleaned out and blowed out. So we're basically ready to cover it. And I put some, you can use lacquer or whatever, but what we have now is something that is going to fit nice and tight, okay? And it's got the coating on it, so it'll act as a seal as well. And you want to make sure that this fits tight, right? Which I did, I tweaked a little bit, and I got the dents out of it. All right, and put it down. All right, we're nice and good there. Well, everything's tight. And then there's one more thing. Hold on, let me get it. Make sure your keyway is nice. Your keyway is clean and that the key itself is clean. And there's no gack in it. And you notice it's stepped. All right, and that's so it can get underneath that cover. And we got to drive it down. We have to get a little hammer and drive it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we're going to have to get a little hammer. Shouldn't need one though, but we want to get it back. Yeah, a little hammer will do it. And then we'll put a little oil on this, yeah, just to seed it, and then we'll drive it back just until it sneaks itself underneath. That's it. It'll stop and drive it back down again. Okay. So we should be good here, right? We've got all new connectors on here. Everything is clean, tucked out of the way. Let me back you out. All right, so I stripped back. All right, we got this on here. I grabbed one from another machine. You know, and I, I, whenever I have bad coils, if I see that these are good, um, I grab these nice ends. So we should be able to just crimp this on. This is one of these types of crimpers that does this. So a lot of times what we have to do is kind of crimp it back this way. Yeah, that'll work. I get it to fit in here. Come on, you. That's not quite right. There we go. That looks good. Let me give it one more crimp in the towards the front. Yeah, that's good. Right? That looks pretty good. All right, and that should kind of go something like that. Put a little lubricant on in the boot. All right, so that goes in nice and easy. All right, fellas. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to put a little oil on that. Then I can put the flywheel back. Everything looks good here. Generally, what I like to do is just clean these off. I don't see any anything wrong here. I want to clean the magnet. I'm just going to hit that with a wire wheel, just a wire brush real quick and blow it off. Loop that. I want to check the inside of the magnet as well. And I will put the flywheel on and we'll give it an ignition test. And I got to finish up the ignition wiring. And then we'll go to the uh, battery wiring, wiring as well. Just want to show you guys now this camera probably won't if I put it in manual that's all smoke the sky is gray yeah I got to shut this door For those of us that have filtration systems it would be great but you could see it all see that's all smoke um, you may not see it with this profile but yeah, it's bad all right let me close the door yeah so this was a mess so I clean all this out all right, the magnet looks good. It polished up in there a little bit. You're probably not going to see it, but I just run one of my cartridge rolls in there, just slow, you know, a, a sort of a, a lightweight one. Everything looks good. Okay, we can put this on now. Here we go. I still feel like I'm screwing it up. No, it's in there. I can see the key. All right, let's do a spark test. I gotta hook it to the switch next, so we'll lower it down. That's good. All right, we're gonna go spin it up and check for spark. The only thing I don't like is that sound. I hear the piston, it could be, we could have a problem with this piston. It could be the wrist pin. So I've been lubricating that. I just cleaned it off with a wire brush, that little terminal there, it's missing a screw. We'll go do the others later, but I'm gonna show you what I put in there. I'm using my tranny fluid mix, and I've been doing it you know, on and off, so it's, it's a heavy duty switch. All right, let me show you what I'm gonna do. All right, it's getting late, fellas. Let me finish up a little bit of electrical work, and we'll clean up the battery posts, and get that together, and we'll see if the starter motor spins. And then we'll put, you know, put the belt on and all that, and we'll check the ignition for spark, no spark. And then we just have the carburetor to do. 
um, and we can at least run a test here and there's a bunch of other things that the blade engagement whatever is not working so we can actually hit a few grease points and stuff before I pull it off the table jack it around get some oil at least on it get some grease in a few spots and then we'll see what happens so hang in there the next morning no oh, it's the next morning what a mess you know it's a good thing I clean up kind of as I go all right all right I, I don't know what to do I know what I need to do I know what we're gonna finish we're gonna finish I'm gonna finish showing you what I was doing over here all right that's what I'm supposed to be doing can I clean up at all in here is this something I can do to make things a little neater I think I'm done with heat shrink there's not much more electric to do we just have to clean up battery terminals stuff like that right and and then I think I think uh, I was playing around last night with just lubricating some things. So this spring I found swinging because it's broken. It's hanging on this back here. Let me turn a little light on. All right, hanging on that. So it goes to something up here. These are not locking in, so deck won't spin. Um. What I want to do is I'm going to get this thing up a little higher when I'm done with the electric and shove the battery in. Another thing I want to do, too, is I wanted to clean this tank, and I didn't, and now I want to start it. I'm thinking, you know what, let me lean underneath there, see if I can just pull that tank out real quick. There's, a, there's four bolts. It's on studs, all right? Maybe we'll just get that out of there real quick. I'll give it a rinse first thing in the morning. Then I'll do what I wanted to do, finish up. It can be drying, and I'll run some gas through it and leave it out in the sun for a little bit, whatever sun there is, because the fires in Canada, they're starting, it's starting to clear up a little bit here. I mean, it's a little bit brighter, but it's cool today because all that Canadian air came down. We do all of that. We're going to hit some grease areas. You know, like there's a couple of lube points up underneath here, which you're not going to be able to see. I'll try and get the little camera up underneath so you can see some of them. All right, I can't get the tank out. I can't. I got these two bolts out. Those, I can't because the starter motor is in the way and this bolt, uh, don't get me started. All right, so no butt splice here, fellas. It's one of these, see? Okay, so we can plug it in. That way we can take the motor out, which is what I want to do, which is just a good idea in general to be able to get to it. It's easier to deal with, so we have a little pigtail. Let me bury that. Let me clean these up. Let me check my grounds, make sure. I don't think this strap is long enough, so... We're gonna have to figure out, I gotta find all my big wire electric stuff and we'll get the battery in and we'll, we'll turn it over. All right, fellas. <clears throat> okay, so I got the red wire where the black wire is supposed to go and the black wire where the red wire is supposed to go, but it's okay. All right, all we wanna do is check for spark and spin. Spark and spin, turn the key on. Oh yeah, we got spark. And I don't know if we don't have spark because I'd have to bypass the starter motor to put the starter motor to make it turn, but I think I think we we're, we know like because we were trying this before. Nothing we can do too. Hold on, yeah, we could try this. All right, we just want to check to see with the switch off that we have no spark. No, we got spark. Okay, so what the problem is? Let me take the key out. So it's not grounding, and it should be. We wired everything right. Could be an issue in here. Yeah, it's still sparking. All right, well, we have no way to shut it off. <clears throat> and I don't know why that is. Let's, uh, switch could be dirty. Let me fool around for a little bit. You know? Yeah, I can say. Yeah, she's not, she's not shutting it off. All right, what we want to do then is maybe I'll take this this out and see. Let's ground that. Probably have to take that switch out, right? Take it out and throw it in some... I've been putting fuel, uh, my gas stuff in there, my training fluid mix. But <clears throat> we need a wire. we got to ground that. And we'll, this way we'll know is the problem... 
you know, in in there somewhere, or where is it? Where is the issue? At least for now, we have a way of shutting it off. Is the problem in the switch? Is it in what I did? I thought I already tested this, but that's why we test and test. This is old stuff. We just need a, a an appropriate place. So this is pretty. This should ground it. So let's see. So the problem is it <clears throat> the problem is in the switch. <clears throat> Let me make up a little plug end for this. Alright. But at least the switch is turning over this whole thing. Because remember this this there's no um there's no solenoid <clears throat> in this. There's uh like a Ford solenoid, uh is what I usually like to use, or the smaller solenoids for these lawn tractors. It's all in this switch. This is a heavy-duty switch, so at least the contacts to turn this over are working. So we've got that. Let me make up a little end for this. We'll plug it into here, and then I guess to shut it off, we'll just have to, you know, psh, ground it or run away. All right, so that so we've gotten this far. This is a step-by-step -step process, fellas. It just it just is. You just got to be patient. And for those that are into this old stuff, um, you, could I do like a complete rebuild and do like time lapse? And you know, one day I might do one of those kinds of shows, but not now. Not I'm not ready for that, and I'm not into that right now. And you know, YouTube is like a hopefully like a long-term thing for us, and so we could get involved in stuff like that later. Could I have done the video better? Could I have made it in shorter segments? Yeah, there's always room for improvement, and I talk about that kind of stuff in my live shows. They do. Come in for my live shows. You know, what are you guys doing? You know, it's it's late, Saturday night, not doing anything else. I'm old. Old people sitting around. There's young people, too. There's some young fellows on there. What's up? So, next one, we'll get involved in the call later, like I said, and I think there's going to be something funny in there. And Henry, you're going to have to be patient, all right? You know, my friend Henry is cranky. He's, he's yelling at me. Okay, you got you got to be patient. All right, you know I don't know what I have yet. We don't know what we got here, and I have some other stuff, and I'm not going to show you that yet. That's towards the end. I think at the last episode I'll show you some of that stuff that I have laying around. So I have some other plans that I can't share with you right now because of you know governmental restrictions and you know legal issues and you know insurance policy so we'll get to that right next episode we'll fool around the call but later and like i said to make them a little bit shorter and i know it's hard watching a one hour like like i watch a lot of guys that do one hour shows and war I'm watching a guy yesterday doing one of these old it was a john deere little um uh like a four-wheel tired um what the hell you call those machines? Um, it's, a, it's like a little dozer, bucket dozer thing. It's not really a skid, it's a skid steer, chain driven, but they're like real entry level, it's like a midget skid steer really, and it's made by John Deere, and I want one. I got, that's That's gotta be something. This is like over two hours in playing with this thing, and he's got a bunch of them. What was it, the 935 or something? I forget, I'm terrible with numbers. And he's got a couple of these things, but this one he wanted to get working because he's got a, a piece of property way upstate. And you can't plow, right? If you're not up there all the time and you haven't plowed, when you come back, because it gets cold, it gets warmer, it melts, it freezes, right? It's concrete. So he needed something with a bucket, and this thing will lift 1,200 pounds, no problem, right? Its breakaway is a little bit higher, but it, it, it'll, it's tiny, and it, like, it'd be perfect for like what I do. So I, I'm going to look for something like that. I, I like these tractors and these smaller things. I don't have a big enough property to warrant the bigger equipment. And so this little Sears is, is like it fits into uh, my game plan overall. And, of course, I appreciate these things. And like Henry says, Arch, you've got to save these things. <clears throat> you know, they're going to go to electric and get rid of everything. Yeah, no, they put the curse on, Henry. I know. I talk about that a lot in my live shows. I go deep as to why this is happening. I get it. Henry, I'm totally with you on that. Like, we're trying to save this old stuff. And Henry, by the way, check out Henry's channel, um, Henry Miraski, and he does uh, big dog repairs, and, and he's, got a, he's got a lot of cool old tools. He's been going through tool stuff lately, which is nice. I always enjoy that. I, don't, I, I, I subscribe to so many people, and I'm so busy all the time. Like, it's sometimes, fellas, I just don't get to watch everybody. And, um, but I'm there. I'm there with you, supporting you. 
So we'll, we'll get to all of this, right? We'll get through it all. Just stay tuned for the rest of it. And I think this ignition system is now repaired. And, it, you know, obviously it's functioning. It's working. Got to figure out why I can't shut it off. That switch is... There is no... Uh, there, there is no solenoid or anything. Maybe we'll put one in in the future. I just sold my last one, so I got to get a couple more. I got to buy them. Um, just like regular little guys for these tractors. I don't think there's any left on the old stock machines that are out there. I've pickled all of them. You know, my, my junk... People say, you junk out, Arch. No, it's not. Okay, it's, it's the garden. It's Arch's garden, all right? Stay tuned for the next one, fellas. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for everybody supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. And yes, Henry, okay, be patient. I'm going to try to save as much as I can, right? I'll see you guys later.